all her lovely things that she brought from Italy. My aunt, my aunt Ada played with matches and set fire to the thing. Goofy. And I tell them about 1938. Or, uh, when oh, the hurricane? I was nine years old, right? You said, but even before that, when you used to go to the sisters on Toby Street, where I also went. Do you remember that? Remember they had the big parade? Oh, yeah, and one of the, that's right, that's right. I remember now, my mother and father, I guess my mother found out that I was really being neglected, so early in the morning she would drop me off at Bell Street, you know, the nursery at Bell Street? Mm -hmm. And I would go there. And I liked being there. That was that was very nice. I played with the kids. For some reason, I didn't get lice in my head like my sister Doris did. Because <laughs> what they did was they would put little veils on the little girls and go into chapel. And of course, the veils were interchangeable. And who knows what was living in one of those little veils. But no, I, I never remember getting lice, but I remember my sister Doris and how my mother would hold her between her knees and clean her hair. <laughs> But anyway. Did your grandparents get along? My grandparents? Well, that's a whole sack of honey. That's not too pleasant. Let's hear it. Well, my grandfather came from a, from, a, from a genteel family in Italy, and he was one of the younger sons. And because he was one of the younger sons, of course, he got no property. So what, what, they, what the family wanted for him, they thought he should be a priest. So they sent him to, to uh, what's that place up on the hill? Monte Cassino. Monte Cassino. And he was educated at Monte Cassino. He, he must have received a very good education because he was literate and he appreciated music and he was an educated man. So at the time came he didn't want to be a priest, so he came to the United States. But it was lonesome. So his family arranged a marriage for him. They took an artist family from Avizzano, who had a lovely daughter, and my grandfather never even met her, and they got married. And he promised her that she would live like a queen in the United States. And my grandmother was not prepared for the kind of life that my grandfather had in store for her. She was a very, very unhappy woman because it wasn't that way at all. They lived in a tenement and he had a wage, he had a job, but she had to do her own stuff. She had to do her own housework and her own cooking and all that stuff and she wasn't prepared for that kind of stuff. Did she have a job? Are you kidding? Of course not. Her job was, of course she had three children, Biff, Bang, Biff. That's one way these guys keep these women in tow, you know. Mm -hmm. You know that. So uh, when it got to be, I guess her family got tired of hearing her complain in her letters, so they arranged for her to go back home to Avizano. And that was the start of World War I. When she got back there? No. Oh. Before she got on the boat. And they stopped the travel to Italy. My mother says she can remember my grandmother crying for weeks because she couldn't leave. Did she go with the, trying to go with the kids or without the kids? She was going to go with the kids, all three of them. She was going to take them back, back home to her mother and father. So that was, I don't know, that was tragic. So my grandmother, she just coped with it. Did she ever get to go back? No. The happiest time my grandmother had was moving to California. Well, let's get to that a little bit later. Though. Yeah. When, when did you hear about Avanzano? Do you remember that, with the earthquake? I don't remember. It was just always talked about. You know? It was something that was passed. So you, were, you were much before you. Of course. It was during 1918. Or... What, what was it? What happened? Now, wait a minute. Was it World War Two or the... No, it's World War One. World War One or the earthquake? That I think my mother said it was World War One. Mm -hmm. The earthquake must have come after that. I think it did. Yeah. So you don't remember them talking about that, except it happened. Except it happened. Yeah. And I remember my grandmother being very grieved. She was very. She she cried a lot. And of course, her house was always a mess. 
they used to have to somebody come in and wash this and do that, and my grandma never did any housework. She learned to cook somehow, though, because one of the things that my grandfather did when I, I think even it was before, it was even before I was born, even be, when my mother was just a youngster, he opened a restaurant downstairs where, where he ultimately opened the grocery store, and he ran this restaurant, and he had a, uh, he had a chef called Radik. Yadik, his name was, my mother used to say. I don't, wouldn't even know how to spell it. And my grandmother learned to cook from him. And since then, my grandmother would cook. She, would really, she was really a very, very good cook. Cleaning up, that was something else. <laughs> she used to have Teresa come in and clean up. I remember Teresa. But my grandmother had a very unhappy life. So why was it, why else was not happy oh. after that? I mean, it sounds like the, the the whole idea of going back to Italy uh, went away when Avanzano was gone. That was well before you were born. Yeah. So why was, you, do you remember her being an unhappy woman after that? Well, not so it noticed, not so you noticed. She was just, uh, she was always placid and sanguine. I mean, never, she was always pleasant. Always pleasant. She was always she was she was always nice to me. She'd cook me lunch when I'd walk home. I'd I'd go to the federal to Federal Street School, over over where the federal. Do you know where St. Joseph's is now on the corner of Dean Street and Federal Street? There used to be a primary yes. school there, mm -hmm. and uh, I was enrolled in that when I was five and a half years old. Mm -hmm. And they put me right in the first grade. So I started school early. And I, th I we'd walk all the way home to, home to lunch and back to school again. Were you <coughs> were they speaking English in your house when you were going there? Oh, yeah. They ne my mother and dad never spoke Italian. The only way I learned Italian was when I used to help my grandfather in his grocery store. And most of his customers were Italian. And I learned to speak it quite very well. I thought. <laughs> I thought I did. But, what do you mean you thought? Well, when I got self-critical, when I got critical, when I took Italian in school, I didn't, I didn't appreciate the way I was speaking, you know, so I, I, my Italian slowed up. But I've, I, I, I know how, I, I know, I know it when I hear it. I understand Italian spoken very well. And that's more than I can say for French. I took six years of French. I took I took three years in high school, another three years in college. Six years I took of it. I can read and write it like you can't believe it. Like I could read and write it like you couldn't believe. But as for understanding it spoken or speaking it, I, the schools fall. They fail in that respect, you know. So I had a similar problem with Italian. See, the Italian, I could, it was spoken so well. But when I tried to talk to, to Grandpa's cousins in Pico, they don't understand me. <laughs> they, just, they just don't understand me. So you talked talk to Peter when he came back here in Italian, Peter and John? Did My you, mother and father, I, we used to speak in English. They learned English very quickly. Okay. Yeah, and of course my mother and father knew Italian, so the kids had, they had a, they had an easy time assimilating. Yeah. Okay, what else you want to know? When, so you went to um, that primary school when you were five? Yes. Nice. And you, where were you living then? We were living in one of the tenements in my grandfather's house. And your grandfather, he owned the house? Yeah, he owned the whole house and he owned the basement where once he had the restaurant and then he had the grocery store. He opened the grocery store that you would... That you but I didn't work in. in the grocery store until I was about 10, 10 oh, or okay. 11. Yeah. So even though you guys weren't talking, that your parents, your mom wasn't talking to your grandparents, you'd oh, still live was, in there. But that was, uh, they, had, they had reconciled by Oh, they had reconciled that by then, okay. Yeah, they had reconciled by that time. I would say by two or three years old, you know. Yeah. They and somehow got together. Where was that exactly? The in house? Federal Hill. Yeah, 98 Apples Avenue, right where the highway is now. Oh, okay. <coughs> the house isn't there anymore. Hmm. My grandfather, 
I think I think my my father sold it to my grandfather for fourteen thousand dollars. He wow. sold it to the city of Providence. When they were building ninety-five. I guess so. But my grandfather was in California at that time, so my gra my father would collect the rents for him and send it off to him. And so you got that your grandparents moved to California. Yes. Uh, when how old were you then? I was sixteen years old. Oh, so that's a lot later. Yeah. What uh? It was after the war, when my uncle Eddie came back from the war. He couldn't stand the cold winter, <coughs> so he talked his and of course his brother Silvio was already there. And so he and my grandparents and my aunt Ada and Uncle Fred, they all moved to California. That was when? When I was about 16, 1946. So before you got married. 46, 47. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I would spend August in California with my grandfather, grandmother and grandfather for about four or five years. We'd take the train because by that time my father had railroad passes, you know. And... Uh, We'd, we'd, he'd hire a Pullman, which was extra, and uh, we'd live on the train like it was a, a hotel. It was lovely, you know. Good menus, we'd have a berth. I'd, I'd be on the top with my sister and my mother and father being the bottom berth. They were that large, and it was fun. I well, liked that. How old were you when your sister was born? Five years old, Thank almost you. to the day. Because she was born November 1st, and I was born November 3rd. Were you guys pretty close growing up? No, not at all. Why is that? I don't know. It might have been the age difference. Hmm. It might be that they just kept us apart where Dara, some people would take care of Doris, and I was left on my own and stuff. I don't know. But no, we were never close. She was always a pain in the